I'm just letting you know now, if you thought this channel was going to be all kinds of like old dude in his basement, like, okay kids, today we're going to learn how to center. You were wrong. You're completely wrong. You should leave now. I know, I know, there's a bunch of centering videos out there, but I want to make this one a little bit different. Now, I gotta tell you right now, there's a couple different ways to center, and they all have the same base rules, but there's none of them that are really more correct than the other way. Almost every potter can tell you that when you center for the first time, you feel it, you know it, you understand how to do it. But there's a couple different tips and tricks along the way that will actually help you center, and I'm here to explain them to you. But the first thing I want to tell you is that do not try, if you're a beginner potter, to work with porcelain clay. There are a couple like savants out there who could naturally work with good clay like this, but just to let you know, if you're a beginner and you use porcelain clay and you can't center even if you get good at centering, because it's essentially like throwing cream cheese, look, you need to graduate to the big boy clay, okay? You don't get to just get expensive clay right away. You're gonna ruin your experience for clay forever. So please start off with something that has grog in it or some redstone, or some type of, of iron clay. Don't start off with the high quality stuff because this stuff takes a certain touch to handle and it's usually some, if you see somebody working with porcelain, you're like, okay, so that guy's probably gone through the gambit of other shit clays. Porcelain is a whole different monster. So please don't be that kid who's like, I, I want, I want the nice clay now. Now there's a couple different ways to center and I'm gonna try and go over at least three or four of them with you. Although they all have the same base rules in mind. I'm not going to go over wedging in this video, I'm probably going to go over wedging in another video because as it turns out, I'm not too good at wedging. I only know one type of wedging and it's ram's head wedging. I don't know how to spiral wedge at all, which is like the way that pros wedge. But Dante, have you watched the videos of spirals so you can learn how to do that? The demos ain't helping me, alright? Samantha. Now before we start, there's a couple different things that I want to tell you to do that some teachers might not tell you to do. First of all, you put... You get as close to this wheel as you can, okay? Look, look at my wheel. Uh, it's a good decision to have a towel over your lap just so that the water doesn't get over here. Usually, um, most places have a splash pan. I don't work with a splash pan. I just put water catch here with a sponge and water catch here with a sponge. And that's just how I do mine. But firstly, I want to let you know to get as close as you can to this. Please be in a comfortable position, but don't be that guy who's like back here trying to center like this. If this works for you, you're probably kind of more an advanced potter and you understand how to put your weight somewhere, but the goal is to put your elbows on the inside, or at least on your legs, so that they don't move and they're a lot more stable. If you're trying to stabilize here and your hands are moving around, you're not centering. Your hands need to be very stable and it's hard to engage all your muscles in your back and your chest and your arms to stay like this, at least for most beginner potters. It's much easier to teach them by doing this, just putting it on the inside. So that way, if their elbow moves, their legs end up moving too, and they do this. They don't want this. You don't want to be moving at all. You want to be very, very centered. So you're going to get this wheel pregnant right here is what you're going to do, all right? Get straight up on it. I'm going to let you know right now there's a couple different types of people that you're going to see who are going to center a weird way. The way I center is from the bottom up, and then I come back down with my coning, and I'll show you that right now. I start all the way from the bottom, right, with my pinkies down here, see that, and I squeeze. My arms aren't moving that much, and then I squeeze in my fingers, and I bring it upwards, and I put my thumb over the top. My hand is not moving though, notice this, my hand is not moving. A little bit of water will do the trick. Please don't be that guy, please do not be that guy in class who's like, oh man, I need, I need, I need way, I need way more water. Please do not be that person. You honestly only need to wet your hands or put a little bit of water from the bowl in there and start again. You have all the lubrication you need. Now you're probably right now like, Dante, what about the skirt at the bottom? This is what I call the skirt. Uh, well, a lot of potters call this the skirt, but I like to call it the skirt because then I like to say I take the skirt off. Comment down below if you call it the skirt too, please, because I want to know other people call this the skirt instead of just the bottom. <laughs> You're gonna have to center and cone up and down more than once, right? So what I do is I go all the way down to the bottom and yes, hear that sound? Your hand is gonna be touching the bottom of the wheel. Do not be afraid of that. You're gonna have to do that. It's not really gonna hurt. 
just squeeze in like this with your pinkies at the bottom, and then engage your fingers once it gets to the top, and then start moving both your hands up in a steady motion. Once you get to the top, go ahead, push down, and what helps me here is that I put my thumbs in like parallel, right, over it, and I push that way. And if I just lean my body inwards and keep my thumbs there, sooner or later, and I don't move my arms, notice how my hands aren't moving, and I slowly release. Notice, notice how I said the word slowly release. The reason I said slowly release is because a lot of people get frustrated and just want to get this process over with to pass class or whatever they need to do or to throw faster. So what they end up doing is they'll center and they'll let go really quick and that happens. You don't want that to happen. When you're done centering and you feel that it's centered, go ahead and just slowly let your hands off. Now that's how I center. I center from the bottom up and then I come up, down and I cone again. A lot of beginners don't know how to cone and so we'll go over that in another demo, but I will say that that's kind of the way you recondense your clay platelets while you're on the wheel, because you can't really wedge once you're in this state, right? So you're essentially just pushing them back together. You're bringing them all the way back up, right? And then you're pushing them with your thumbs all the way back down, and you're recondensing them. You're putting them into a tight, compact wad of clay that you can throw later on. This helps a lot whenever you're throwing at the later stages. I'm about to show you the different kind of ways to center and the different kind of people that do different kind of things to center and some of them are funny but no one way is the wrong or right way. I will say that I have my own preferred way of centering and I just showed you but here's a different couple ways you're going to see in class and even in other studios that the way they center. Of course you have the karate chopper. The karate chopper will put his hand here with the blade of his hand and just mash that junk down like this. This kind of person usually makes really wide bases, otherwise they're going to have to come back in. The problem with centering this way, which is not really a problem for those people because they're comfortable with it, you have to keep this hand really, really stable and right here in order to do this because it's kind of like a balloon. All the pressure is going to come out here if you're pushing down just right here, right? Number two, the Hulk Smasher. The Hulk Smasher does the same exact thing as the Karate Chopper, but they're most likely a student who's going to get really, really frustrated with the fact they can't center and just decide to muscle that crap down. Instead of wetting the blade of their hand, they wet the blade of their fist right here, and they just push down, they come right here, and they put all their body weight downwards. The Karate Chopper usually pushes down a little bit and moves their arm in this motion, but the Hulk Smasher will literally just put their fist here, lock that junk in, and just push it down with all of their freaking might. And they usually lean in very far like this. Then there's the freaking Wave Master. I love the Wave Masters, but they always look so peaceful. They'll cone up, they'll take all their stuff from down here, and they will slightly touch their clay and just bring it up and down multiple times. All the way here, and then they'll push down. And they'll come up again. And then they'll push all the way back down. Until they finally get to a space where they're comfortable, like this. These people are magical to watch on the wheel. They just do this a bunch of times until it looks like this. Then there's the good enough potter. This guy's junk is all over the place. You don't know what to tell him. He don't center anyway, so it doesn't matter. He's frustrated. He's just, his hands all over the place. It's not a good look. But one day he found out that if you get a sponge and you put it at the base and then slowly move upwards, that it kind of looks mostly centered. That guy. This guy figured out a long time ago that you don't actually have to be centered, you just gotta make it look like it's centered to pass the damn class. Those are the four types of potters and or students that you're going to see in clay studios slash schools that are going to center their clay in different variations. Remember, like I told you, there's no one wrong way to center your clay. As long as it's really aligned throughout the entire clay body, you're fine. The magical part, though, as soon as you center and you figure out your way of centering, you're going to know it and you're going to feel it. Now, those are just a few of the people that you're going to meet in studios and schools that center different ways. And you have to remember, there's no one right way to center. There's only different ways that work for different people. 
And I want you to remember that specifically because if someone centers a certain way and you think they're doing it the wrong way and you try and retrain them to do it your way and their way could have been masterwork or they could have, you're, you're disrupting their artistic process. It's a lot more about the process of how you get to an end goal in art and the things you learn along the way than it is about the actual just straight end goal. Like you're cutting out the middleman is not what we do as artists. We take enjoyment in the middleman. That's one of the reasons why I kind of disagree with 3D printing, because it takes away the artistic and human conditional part of art itself. There's no reason to make art if things are categorized as art that are not made by human beings or other beings on this planet. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you're getting rid of the practice of it, so please don't tell someone how to do their art if their art works for them. If they ask you for advice, yeah, go ahead and give them a little bit of advice. But never tell somebody that obviously has a way that's working for them that their way is wrong. Because it's not wrong, you're just a dick. <laughs> well, I really hope you Dirty Potters like this video on centering. That's the first way I showed you the way I center. And then I tried to show you a few different ways that other people center in class and in studios. If you center one of these few ways, please let me know down below by letting me know what kind of potter you are. If you're like a karate chop potter or a Hulk smash potter. Or in fact, if there's a way I didn't cover on this list, you let me know. Put it down. The main thing that's kind of constant among all the centering for most potters is that you have to start with your pinkies on the bottom of the wheel. Don't be that person who's like, oh, it's gonna hurt my pinkies. It's not gonna hurt your pinkies. You need to get down to the bottom, the most stable, base part of the clay, which is the very bottom of the clay, bring that clay all the way up, and then center back downwards. I prefer to center with my thumbs on top of the very apex of the clay, but a lot of other people don't like to do that. If your hands are moving around everywhere, they shouldn't be. They should not be moving. Your job is to make sure from your elbow all the way to your hand and your wrist that your arm is not going to move. That's why I'm going to tell you to put it on your knee, like this. Probably shouldn't stand on top of chairs that have wheels on them. You need to be really close to your wheel and you need to be really, really stable. Don't let your arm move. If you're looking down and your hands are moving, that is your number one problem. You need enough lubrication, which is water for you, and then you also need to not have your hands moving. But you don't need that much lubrication. You essentially just need to wet your hands. If I, if you ever come to my studio and I see you just gobbing water on, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, thank you guys very much for watching this demo. I hope this helped you or is gonna help you later on in this class. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. And if you wanna see me every single week, I upload every single Thursday, go ahead and click the bell next to the subscribe button. It'll notify you every single time I put out a video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you, Dirty Potters, next week. Wedging is kind of like using a condom. You don't, like, you don't have to, especially straight out the bag, but you probably should.